Hog Sunday, Football Sunday. It's all happening. And so I know you're all eager to get out there and get your chips and dip and all of that going. So we'll do the best that we can do. And uh, I believe there was no shadow seen today, so we're in winter, which is okay. So I'm going to get plenty of rain. I hope you're all doing, as I said this morning, your rain dance, because that way we get the rain and you get exercise. So keep at it. <laughs> so we're looking today at this thing called... Spiritual mind practice is one of the things that I love to contemplate, I have to say. And we're moving right along <clears throat> in a deeper awareness of what spiritual science, when understood, can do in our lives. And spiritual science is a universal principle. I mean, it covers everything and everyone and is embraced in some way or another by all religions. And so... We're here today because of a common desire amongst us all. It's a common, it's a universal desire. And that, that common desire is to be able to be in control of our own lives, to take charge of our own lives, to direct our own lives, and not be beholden to or feel uh, disempowered because we're depending upon luck, lady luck, we're depending upon fate, we're depending upon an unknown entity out there somewhere that may or may not be real. Um, but we have this sense within us, somehow or another, that it is given to us to take responsibility for our own lives and to be sovereign beings in our own right. And that's not there for no small reason. It's there because, yes, indeed, we can. We can take charge of our lives. We can take control of our lives. We can work with this thing called life in such a way that I can assist and support the co-creation process that's in play all of the time. And in so doing, um, uh, be able to control my life, shape my experiences, and mold my future. Yes, I can. But in order to do that, there are certain things that I need to know, certain things that are important for me to know, because these are the things that I will be able to build upon so that I can do what I'm talking about right now be in charge of my life, be the director of my life, be in control of my life. And so one of those things is to understand that we live in a spiritual, in a mental universe, and that uh, it is composed of an infinite intelligence power, an infinite intelligent power, uh, force, um, energy, and that this is a power for good everywhere present that I can use for good. And I use it all the time, not necessarily for good, because if I go unconscious, and if I'm not consciously aware, I can use it in a way that's, that produces not so much my good, indeed, because I, I'm mindless. I'm thinking randomly, I'm living randomly, I'm mindless, and that's carelessness, and carelessness can produce things that we don't want in our lives. And I have to understand that there is only the one intelligence, there is only the one presence, there's only the one power, and out of that flows everything. That one power, that one presence, that first cause, we can call the creator of all. And is known by very many names, uh, and we'd be here all day if I was to n mention every single one of them, at least those that I know of. Uh, there are many more that I don't know of. But anyway, this one power, one presence is avail available to me at all times, right now, available to me, and I can use it, and I can use it for the good. Now, I can only consciously use it for good because it will not go or flow against its own nature. It will not go or flow against its own nature. And any time I try to manipulate that power, any time I try to use it for evil and so on, the evil will last for a moment or two or three because it's, sure, it's pure human willpower that's keeping it going. But then it will fizzle out. It always will fizzle out. It will always come to nothing. It will always be overcome because it has no base to it. It has no foundation to it. It has no truth to it. It is not the truth, therefore it cannot stand. So good truth will always triumph over evil, always, as history has proven. Always good will triumph, sooner or later, 
good will overcome that which is not good because it is the truth and the truth is all powerful. And so these are the things that we need to know and have a sense of sensibility about that. Now if I do know that, I get a sense of the one power, the one presence, the one energy, the one infinite being, the personalness of that, the presence of that, being omnipresent. I begin to glimpse its omniscience, its omniscience, its omni-essence, its omniscience, all-knowingness, and then, of course, its omnipotence, all-powerfulness. So this power is all-powerful, all-knowing, and everywhere present, which means it's present in me. Just no matter how bad I am, no matter how debauched a life I've lived, that power and that presence is living in me, is with me, has never not been with me, has always been with me, because when the Creator creates, what the Creator creates, the Creator enters into, settles down in, and remains. So there's a center core of my being that's always in its pristine state and cannot be touched, is flawless. And my life and your life in spiritual unfoldment is getting back to that understanding. As the song says, we're getting back to where we once belonged. That's all we're doing as we spiritually unfold. We're getting back to the self of ourselves. So if I know these things, it's the first start. But then I have to have a deep and a profound desire to use these principles, these universal principles that exist, that flow out of this universal intelligence, principles that are exact, principles that are responsive, Principles that are predictable, that's what makes them a science. The predictableness, the exactness of these principles. And so there is this thing called the law of mind, the law of cause and effect, the law of mind, the law of attraction, the law of reciprocity, the law of correspondence, and it's all about the one thing. And it's about consciousness and how I use this one consciousness. There is only one consciousness and you and I think into it. There's no my mind, your mind, their mind, those minds, whatever. There's one mind and all of us are thinking into it. So therefore, consequently, I do not just belong to me. I'm not just a me and I don't just belong to me. There's no such thing as just belonging to me. I am an aspect of the great I am. I am a thinking energy in the one mind and the one consciousness there is. And consequently, if we're all thinking into the one mind, we're all affecting the one mind. So I belong to everything and everyone because I'm affecting everything and everyone and everything and everyone is affecting me. I belong to everyone and everything and everyone and everything belongs to me. That's why our friends in the, in the East say, I am everything and everyone and everything and everyone is me. It's that interconnection. We're all interconnected, which is why you hear me say all the time, we belong to each other. So let's take care of each other. Let's be in each other's corner. Let's work together and make this world a better place so that everybody gets an opportunity to live in it in a dignified way, in a world that works for all. So these are the things I've got to know. I've got to know and sense and feel that there is something more to life than just this small isolated me in it. I'm not a small isolated me. I am a magnificent radiant point of power through which the Almighty expresses itself in all of its radiant magnificence, that's who I am at truth level. So why would I sell myself short at the human level? So again, you and I have to come into awareness that I am indeed a human being, all very conscious of that indeed. The world of the senses will make me know that I am indeed a human being, but I'm more than a human being. I'm also a spiritual entity. Now the spiritual entity aspect of life and living in a three-dimensional plane, in a world of the senses, in the exterior world, gets overlooked and forgotten most of the time. The focus is on being a human being. 
Now, all the effort and energy mostly goes into being a human being. If I could take a little teeny piece of that and put it into being a spiritual entity, my life would change dramatically and radically for the better. If I were to put as much emphasis into being a spiritual being as I do into being a human being, I would, I would transcend. I couldn't stay here any longer. I'd be so light of being. I'd have to get out of Dodge because it'd be too heavy and too material and too whatever. I'd be just bumping into myself all the time. So I'd have to either, you know, go up like Onak in a fiery chariot to heaven or whatever, get out of here, as I say, get out of Dodge. If I put as much emphasis on being a spiritual entity as I do on being a human being. Isn't it amazing? Oh, aren't we wonderful? We suffer from such spiritual amnesia, it's just so not funny. Anyway, we're here to wake up. We're here to wake up. Now, we're getting to a tool that this teaching offers us in order to do exactly what we set out to do in the beginning of this sharing. Take control of our lives and direct our lives toward good. The particular tool I'm talking about this morning is spiritual mind practice or spiritual mind treatment. Now this is a way that we as spiritual technicians, spiritual scientists, show up in prayer. Show up in prayer. And when we say we're going to show up in prayer, what we're talking about is we're going to singularly focus and put our minds on the good that we desire to express and to experience. That's what we mean. We're not talking about showing up to say prayers, to recite formula, to do um, um, anything other than know something know something, feel something, be convinced of something, imagine something, see something, and say yes to what it is we're knowing and seeing, imagining and feeling and are convicted about. That's what we call affirmative prayer in this philosophy, spiritual philosophy, affirmative prayer. Now for me, it's very different to what I grew up with because what I grew up with when it was time for prayer um, I had my set prayers in mind and I went through all of that, my set prayers. And before the set prayers, um, there was the dialogue. And there will be still dialogue before I'm ready for the prayer. And the dialogue went something like, well, I don't know whether this is God's will for me. I don't know whether I'm worthy of this good that I want. I don't know whether I'm ready for it. I don't know whether I've grown enough learned enough, uh, been enough, tested enough, and so on. I'm not quite sure. I don't even know if it's God's will that I should have a happy and enjoyable celebratory life. That would be the thinking. And then the beginning of the prayer would open up as a kind of a negotiation scene. I'd enter into negotiation with the powers that be. I would have, you know, a marketing plan, so to speak. <laughs> and I would be sharing my marketing plan with the Good Divine and convincing the Good Divine how wonderful it would be for the Divine to allow me to realize and experience this because there would be a good outcome for the Divine as well as for me. It would be a win-win situation, you know, a good negotiation. And um, that would be my first tactic. If that wasn't working for me, I'd enter into plea bargaining. <laughs> the next step would be plea bargaining, you know and uh, all the way down to being reduced to being a beggar and pleading and begging and imploring and uh, promising the sun, moon and stars for this, that and the next thing. That would be the old dialogue that would enter in and then that would be followed by the prayers. Now, the way it is when I show up in prayer is the dialogue takes place and the dialogue pre-prayer is all right, can I really believe that this good is there for me? Can I really believe I'm supposed to have it? Can I really believe that it's mine for the knowing, the taking, the owning? Um, can I really believe that there is a power and a presence and a force and an infinite intelligence backing up my desire to experience this good? Can I really conceive that this good is already done, already there, just waiting for me to flesh it out into 
reality through my acceptance of it, my allowing of it, my saying yes to it, my conviction about it, my support of it, can I really, really show up with this kind of sound and powerful open receptivity, gratitude for it already being so, and the conviction that now I can get up and go about my business knowing it is already taken care of. That's the dialogue pre-entering in to prayer. When that's done, then I have readied myself, centered myself to know clearly how to go about supporting and co-creating this good with my source. So I come to the, the uh, training wheels in prayer. These are only training wheels. In the beginning, we need them. After a while, we don't. And there are seven steps to this formula in praying my good into my experience. And the first one is recognition, recognition, recognition. We get that from Troward. Recognition. What are we recognizing? We're recognizing that there is only God, and God is all there is. God is everywhere present. Life, in its fullness, is everywhere present. Good, in its abundance, is everywhere present. I'm recognizing it. I'm recognizing it. I'm allowing myself to feel it. It's sinking in that the fullness and the plenty and the goodness of life, of God, of good, is present everywhere, which means it's present in me. Which takes me to my next step in prayer, which is identification. The universal and the individual has to be able to become one. The universal and the individual, the individual and the universal needs to enter into the sense of community, communion, oneness. And it would happen in these first two steps in prayer. So identification means, well, if God is all there is, and there is only God, and there's a fullness and plenty everywhere, then that's right where I am. It's available to me, and it's available to me now. It's never not been available to me. I've never been without it. It's always been there as a possibility. Life holds infinite possibility for me, and mine is the privilege of giving birth to it in this formula for the realization of my good. So God is all there is, and there is only God, takes me to the third step, which is clarity. I've got to get clear on why I showed up in the first place in prayer. And my clarity is that I'm ready now to express and experience the fullness of life, the plenty of life, the abundance of life, the opulence of life, in mind, body, heart, and soul, and in the great body of my affairs. That's my clarity. I'm celebrating this. I'm celebrating that God is all there is. I'm celebrating that I'm one with God. I'm celebrating that that fullness and plenty is available to me now. Which takes me to the next step. Having been filled up with this conviction, I know there's nothing and no one can get in the way of me demonstrating and realizing my good, especially my own self. No person, place, or thing is going to get in the way of me realizing this good. Because no person, place, or thing has the power to deny the goodness, the willingness, the availability of spirit to bring this good through into my life. Because it is its own desire for me that I should have life and have life in abundance and that my joy should be complete and that I should enter into the kingdom and partake of all of its gifts. That's the divine design for me. And nothing can overcome that if I am one with it. So that fourth step is a step we call denial. Denial that anything would have power to stop or block this happening. Which takes me into my fifth step. Gratitude. Gratitude. Thanksgiving. That I should know this. That I should know, be aware that this is something available to me just exactly as I am. Good, bad, or indifferent, because I can turn on a dime if I get into the right consciousness. 
I can step out of my past with all of its nonsense and I can turn my present into something glorious that is full of expectancy so that I can ensure a great good future. So I'm grateful for that, which turns into praise. For me, the sixth step, praise. When I'm grateful, I want to be in praise of that which has caused the gratitude within me. Spirit, God, the good, the infinite, the beautiful, the giver of life back unto itself. And then my final step is I release it and I let this go. I send it forth into the law of life for the law of life to scoop it up and run with it and bring it on home into my life by means of an experience it's an awesome and powerful thing how would that prayer look if I'm praying that in my own little corner in my own little room in my own little place where I pray it would start off as I have said I show up now open and receptive to my good. I show up now ready to say thank you for what already has been given and to realize the good that I desire knowing that it first desired to express itself through me, through life's great desire to give itself back onto itself. I'm ready. This is the ripeness of time. I'm in a ripe moment. And I know that by the power and the presence of the spirit within me, I can accomplish this good. I know that. And knowing that, I honor, I acknowledge that power, that life, that beauty, that grace, that good, that lover of my soul, singing its own song of givingness in me, around me, and about me, and inviting my Amen. Spirit is indeed a very palpable and real presence to me, in me, through me, from me. And I am one. I am one with Spirit. I am one with good. I am one with God. I am one with the good that I desire to demonstrate because of a divine impulse in me that put it there. And I'm saying yes to it. I'm saying yes to it now. So I do know, I do accept that the fullness of life, the plenty of life, the wonderful gracefulness of life's opulence is flowing through me as I think, as I feel, as I speak. I just have to say yes in a convicted way to it. So I know, therefore, deep within myself, and everything pertaining to me knows, that I have a fullness and a plenty of health, a fullness and a plenty of wealth, a fullness and a plenty in loving relationships, a fullness and a plenty of creative expression. The uplands of spirit is pouring through me now, wants to know more of itself and expression by means of me now. And I am saying yes, yes, yes. I believe it, I accept it, I allow it, I know it, I'm giving thanks for it already in place, this opulence of spirit. And I am so grateful. How grateful I am. Spirit knows my gratitude, feels my gratitude. I am so grateful and thankful that I should know this, that I am aware of this, that I can take control and direction of my life through the auspices of spirit working with me, in me, through me, and as me. I am so thankful. I praise my good. I bless my God. I honor my divine infinite beingness. I love my source. And I know that what spirit has ordained must happen.
And as Spirit's divine desire and design for me is, so too is mine. I align myself with my source and I say yes to this good that is for good and good alone. And not just for my good, but for the good of all else besides. For what I am given is mine to share and I am so grateful and happy to do exactly that. And what I'm knowing for myself, Spirit, I am knowing for every person on this plane. I am known this abundance for every living thing. And what I know and what I feel and what I say yes to happens. So I am grateful now to release this statement of truth, this acceptance of good into your creative process, the law of life itself, the great mother matrix of life, knowing it receives what I give it and it takes it and molds it and shapes it and brings it out into my life as the good that I am now saying yes to. So in the sweet surrender, I release, I let go, I let God, and so it is. And that's the way I now pray. And that's the way, or similar, you can show up in prayer and realize you're good. This is available to you. And it happens through you. Remember, life only happens through you, not to you. It happens through you, through what you allow in thinking, in feeling, in conviction, in what you say yes to, in what you imagine, in what you accept. Accept only the good, and the good only will be your experience, and so it is. We invite you to experience Dr. Moira in person on Sundays. Our services are at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and child care is available. Please join us. If you enjoy these messages and would like to make a donation to our center, please visit our website at redondocsl.org. Thank you for your support of this ministry.